You need help being consistent, and that is exactly what I'm going to give you in this video. By the time you are done watching, you are going to know the foolproof way to guarantee you can stay consistent with whatever goal you have set for yourself in the health and fitness space, whether that be fat loss, whether that be getting stronger, whatever it might be. Now, before we dive into it, please make sure that you are subscribed, that you have notifications turned on, that you comment below if you like this video, just so you can be sure that you can know exactly when my next video is coming out. We're gonna be talking a lot about goal setting. If one of your goals is to get more fit and to be more consistent with your workouts, be sure you click the link below and get my free 52 metabolic workout guide guaranteed to help you torch fat and be consistent with quick, effective workouts. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna be talking quite a bit about how you can actually find consistency, but before we jump into that, I wanna make it clear to you what is actually going to matter most when it comes to setting goals for yourself. First, we need to identify there's two types of goals, okay? There are outcome-based goals and behavior-based goals. Outcome-based goals are usually what you get wrapped up in. In fact, we're about halfway through January right now, and this is when most people who make a resolution to get more fit or to lose weight tend to fall off. It's because we set some sort of excessive expectation for ourselves. So I'll give the example that let's say you wanna start going to the gym. As a result, you decide that you're gonna work out seven days a week, you are only going to eat clean, that you are going to get as fit as possible, as fast as possible. Those are all outcome-based goals. There's no guideline to how you're gonna to get to where you wanna go. And if you approach things that way, you shouldn't be surprised when you fall off because it's pretty much relying on all or nothing thinking. Either I am hitting the gym seven days a week or I am being fucking lazy, right? So therefore, why does it even matter? And you're not the only person who's ever felt that way. So don't, don't worry. I, a lot of the clients I work with deal with this sort of thinking all the time. And by the time we're done working together, they certainly see a different route that they can take. So let's define what a behavior-based goal is. A behavior-based goal breaks down that outcome-based goal into manageable steps. What am I going to do to get to where I want to go? Right. This is something that you usually skip out on. It's like, okay, I want to lose all the weight. Well, what am I going to have to do to get there? Well, I'm going to have to lose weight. That doesn't really tell me anything. Work backwards a little bit. And this is what we would call like reverse engineering. Fancy way of saying just work backwards so you get to the bare ass minimum of what you need to do to get to where you want to go. If we stick with fat loss, right? Let's say you want to lose, let's say you have a goal of losing 30 pounds by the end of 2024. Okay, great. So what does that work out to be? Let's say we want to be safe and conservative with our weight loss, as in it's sustainable and we're not miserable the whole time. Well, then you're going to have a calorie deficit that allows you to lose like 0.5 to 1 pound per week on average per month. That is a pretty hefty calorie range you can give yourself. And if you're not sure about calories or how to even set that for yourself, you can click below and get my calorie calculator. It'll tell you exactly how many calories you should be eating to make sure that you are losing weight. So you can grab that. Well, I'm gonna hit this many calories, great. I am going to need to hit this much protein. Protein is very important for fat loss. And I'm going to need to get to the gym at least two days per week, right? So those are three things that we can look at. Hitting total calories, hitting a specific protein goal, and getting to the gym to lift at least three days per week. That is, that, that, that is very much a behavior-based goal. If I do this, then I will have this happen, right? If I am consistent with my calorie deficit and I'm consistent with my protein intake, I'm going to be really good with my weight loss. And if I add resistance training to that and I'm consistent with it two to three times a week, we are going to see some muscle gain, which is going to also help with weight loss, right? You're going to be more active. You're going to have all, it's, it's almost like a domino effect. So if we go about that, it's very, very different from just saying, I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week. I'm going to eat clean. See, no, we have a system that we put in place. Now, if we take it back even further, hit my calories. Great. You have that figured out because you grabbed my calorie calculator below and you were able to figure that out for yourself. And you know what your protein goal is because protein is really important for fat loss because we want to stay full between meals. We want to preserve lean muscle mass. We want to build muscle mass. We want to recover properly between training sessions, all of that from protein. Your, your goal is 115 grams of protein per day. Cool. 
then what? Right, we gotta take it back another step. What is the most important part of that? Oh, I probably need to make a food shopping list with protein items on it. I probably need to have an idea of what meals I'm going to eat, and then I can make my shopping list. If we skip the shopping list part and just look at I need to hit 115 grams of protein, well, we're missing, we're missing it. Behavior-based variation would be like, I'm going to make sure that I eat at least, tw- at least 40 grams of protein at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Very specific, very clear, very time-specific, and you know that if you're doing it or not doing it. Now, we could simplify and just say, I'm going to hit my protein goal by the end of the day. I'm going to be within my calorie range by the end of the day. And Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm going to work out. Those can be your things, right? We can, we can have it that way. For the purpose of this example, let's have it be, I'm going to hit my protein goal by the end of the day, and I'm going to hit 7,500 steps by the end of the day. That's a pretty good place for someone who has a fat loss goal, who wants to lean out, who wants to be more active, who wants to just start moving in the right direction where you can begin. I'm going to introduce to you my version of a consistency calendar. Some people might call it a habit tracker. Um, That was made very popular by James Clear. Now, here's the idea with a habit tracker. And this is not why, this is why I don't really like habit trackers. Because habits imply either you do it or you didn't do it. And therefore, you're bad, right? But maybe that's me just examining things a little too deep. But that's what I've noticed from a lot of clients because I came from the background of just having people track their habits. And if they missed their habits, well, they would feel like shit about themselves. And that would be pretty negative and could have a downward spiral. Maybe you felt that way before. I have, right? So we want to look at this consistency calendar a little bit differently because consistency is broad. It doesn't mean you have to be 100% perfect right? Because everything that I do with clients is skill-based. See, skills, skills imply that you're going to have to practice. You're going to have to fuck up. You're going to have to learn from that and try again. And you repeat that cycle over and over again. And that's actually how you make progress. That's actually how you get toward your goal. It doesn't work the other way around. Perfectionism is the enemy, is the enemy of progress. Perfectionists are just really good at quitting. Perfectionists are just really good procrastinators. That's the truth. It might be hard to hear, but that, that's what it is. So if we want to be more consistent and hit our goal, then we're going to have to have some sort of consistency framework. Now, I've written out here uh, 1 through 31 because there are 31 days in January, and that's where a lot of people struggle the most. So we're just using that as an example, but you can write it out in a notebook You can use a regular calendar um, and just see how many days there are, right? On top of that, I've written MTWTFSS, abbreviation for Monday through Sunday. And you can see you go week by week here, 13, 14, week by week. And the reason why I just have it spaced out this way is so you can see it in a bigger picture, right? If this is actually on a calendar, you can write in things that you have scheduled. You can plan ahead. Like if you have a business meeting, right? It just works out a little bit clearer that way. But this is just what we have because I can't draw very straight lines on a dry erase board, but this is where we are. So this little symbol key over here is what we have to consider. If we are working on these uh, two things, hitting 7,500 steps and hitting your protein goal, right? If those are the two things, let's say we have to hit them. If we hit them, and I'll say for protein goal, you can be within like five to 10 grams, right? But we want to hit that barem number. You'd put an X through the day. Like you did it. You follow through on it. Awesome. If you miss for any reason, you put an O through the day and I did it in red so you can actually see it. It just means you missed. It doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean you need to forget what you're doing. It doesn't mean you are, are royally fucking up. No, not at all. See, the, the thing that you need to do is be consistent, which means if you have an off day, you have to understand that you just get back and do the stuff again the next day. It's not a you failed. It's a, okay, what can I do to re-strategize? What can be my new strategy going forward? So we'll give an example here. So if you see in the beginning, the day after New Year's, 
everyone is really consistent. And then what happens is on a random Wednesday, it snowed out. So you didn't go for your walk and you forgot to pack your lunch. So you were low on protein. So you missed a day. What happens for a lot of people is then you'll go two days and then you'll miss again. And then you'll go another day and then you'll miss again. And you'll have two days back to back. What can easily happen is if we're missing more than two days in a row, you're more likely to probably quit, right? If we're missing two days in a row, you're more likely to quit because it's just a pattern. It's very easy to fall back into our old behaviors because we think, well, I missed two days in a row. I'm really messing this up. What is the point anyway? And if you're kind of sinking down in your chair or looking away from your phone, as I say this, it's because you've been there and it's okay. We've all been there, to be honest. So what we want to consider is, okay, what happened here? Well, I, I, I missed my walk because it was cold out and because it, it was a little snowy. So I didn't want to go for my walk. Cool. What we want to do is be productive with this. Let me examine this. What could I do differently next time? Hmm. Well, during my lunch break, I could walk the stairs at my office. Oh, that's not too great. Let me try that. So then on Wednesday, you try that. And look at that. You hit your 7,500 steps. We get down here to, to Saturday the 20th, and you missed your protein goal by like 40 grams. Instead of being like, oh, I can't do this, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I ate a really light breakfast. What would happen if I just upped my protein at breakfast? Oh, I hit at least 30 to 40 grams at breakfast on Sunday. Now I'm consistent. Now it's Friday. Oh, you know what? I'm going out with friends. I've been really consistent. I'm going to go up on my calories a little bit. I'm aware of that, right? We're starting to understand I'm aware of it. We're saying, I can't, there's no point, right? So then we're consistent, boom, consistent, boom, 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 right? We can actually use this in a way, these misses, as a way to get yourself on track because you are actively examining it and being like, oh, that's an easy fix. Oh, I know what to do now because I learned from the last time I did that thing. A good example would be like when you first learn how to play an instrument. Um, when you're learning how to play the guitar, you probably wouldn't start by improvising on the guitar. That would be really silly. Like you have no idea what the notes are, anything. No. First you learn chords, then you learn scales, then you learn strumming patterns, then you learn songs, then eventually you get to the point where you can improv, right? It, it takes a while to get there. There's no, there's no end date. Like even when you have been playing guitar for like 10 or 15 years, you're occasionally still going to make mistakes. But the difference is you've been doing it so long, you'll laugh at the mistake you made because it reminds you of a mistake you made when you were like just getting started. How funny is that now? But when you were just getting started and you would make that mistake, you might say, God, this is so hard. I can't. That's the difference between trying to be perfect versus trying to learn a skill or adapt to a skill. You're understanding that you're, it's human and it's completely normal to make mistakes. And there's a difference between making a mistake and failure. The only way you can mess any of this up, whether it be your training, whether it be your fat loss goal or muscle gain goal, whatever it is, the only way you can mess any of this up is if you fucking quit. Like if you're not quitting, you're gonna get where you wanna go. Can I guarantee that it's gonna be in record time? No, you're on your own journey and it doesn't really matter how fast it happens. What matters is that it's happening. So if we can look even further, really to get where you want to go is the, the rule of 80, 20 as, as old as it is at this point, you've probably heard it enough times. If you are consistent 80% of the time, that leaves 20% of the time where you can just kind of, you know, fuck around and find out <laughs> really, it's like, you can go up on your calories, maybe you miss your steps. It's the same thing with weight. We don't use single days because it doesn't show the whole picture. We use weekly averages because it shows a trend. Well, the same idea comes with our consistency. We need to actually have a trend that is on the positive side versus on the negative side. So if it works out in the month of January, there are 31 days, which means you could miss five, five, days one two three four five six six days you can miss six days look at this look how much black marks as in like i did this i followed through there are first 
The six circles, great. Now, if you were to hit two circles and be like, forget it, and then the rest of the month were all misses, well, then you're definitely not making any progress. But here, you're making a ton of progress and you're actually learning what you can adjust because what we're aiming for is 80%. What we don't understand and you don't understand and you get wrapped up in is that passing passing is 80 and up. So a B minus, so here's a B, and here's the minus, is still fucking passing. You do not need an A plus. You do not need an A. A B, B plus, B minus, it is passing. You just need to pass. Then you need to go and study and try again. And maybe the following month you get a B plus. And maybe another month goes by and you get an A minus. And then, oh gosh, you had a really hard month, but you still hit a B minus, right? You're still, all of these are still passing. And I think you lose sight of that. Now, scratch it, I don't think it, I know. You lose sight of that. And it can be really disheartening to think, oh man, I messed all this up. But the truth is, if you use this system and you do some form of tracking, if you are not tracking, you are being ambiguous. How do you measure if you're having success? Right? It can't be randomly stepping on the scale. It can't just be randomly seeing if 225 pounds will go up on a bench. But that, that's silly. That's not productive. What you need to do is be precise with your metrics of how you know you're being successful. And that is being at least 80% consistent for the month, 80%. That also impacts what goals you set for yourself. Case in point, if you set the goal of going to the gym seven days a week, that means oh, this entire week, you would need to go to the gym every single day. Doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Doesn't matter how things are going. You need to go every single day to the gym, no matter what. Rain, sleet, snow, sickness, kids being home from school. You have to go seven days a week. That's not realistic for a lot of people. A B minus is passing and you just need to pass. So that's the best advice I can give you. Be consistent. Don't fucking try to be perfect. Be okay with making mistakes and learning from those mistakes. That is how you actually grow. That is actually how you pursue excellence. That is how you stay consistent. And consistency trumps perfectionism. Consistency allows you to mess up and keep going. That's what people who successfully lose weight and maintain that weight loss do. They stay consistent. It's not always going to look the same, but they are always consistent. And they're usually doing some form of tracking. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, do me a favor, comment below, let me know, give a thumbs up, make sure that you're subscribed, that you have notifications turned on. And remember, if you wanna know exactly how to calculate your calories for yourself for fat loss, click the link below and get my fat loss calculator. And if you are just trying to be more consistent with training, get my 52 metabolic workouts. That is one workout a week for an entire year that you can guarantee you're gonna have. They're quick, they're effective, they torch fat, and they will get you exactly where you wanna go. You are exactly one day away from getting back on track and one day away from realizing how fucking amazing you are.